There are some important keywords when describing the motion of an object. Stationary means the object is not moving. Constant speed means it's moving at the same speed. Accelerating means it's speeding up. And decelerating means it's slowing down. The motion of an object depends on the forces acting on the object and whether these forces are balanced or unbalanced. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So starting off with stationary objects, a parked car is an example of a stationary object. It's not moving. A stationary object experiences balanced forces and these are shown by the arrows being the same size. When an object is experiencing balance forces, it is said to be in equilibrium. When you start the engine and apply your foot on the accelerator, you now have a thrust force that will move the car. There will also be a small force of air resistance in the backward direction. The size of the thrust and air resistance are not equal. Therefore, the car is experiencing unbalanced forces and will accelerate. As the car accelerates, air resistance increases and you would have experienced that if you put your hand outside of the window when the car is moving at slow speeds, there'll be a little bit of air resistance and as you increase the speed, you'll feel more air resistance pushing back on your hand. So if the car continues to accelerate, eventually, Air resistance equals the size of the thrust force. At this point there are balanced forces and the object is in equilibrium again. But this happens when the object is moving, it is not stationary. Instead the object is now travelling at constant speed. So if the object is already moving and then it experiences balanced forces, it will travel at a constant speed. As we said before, if the object starts off stationary and it has balanced forces, then it will remain stationary. If the driver were to put their foot on the accelerator again, they would increase the thrust force. There would be unbalanced forces again and the car would accelerate. All vehicles have a maximum speed because eventually the largest thrust force is balanced by air resistance and the vehicle can't accelerate anymore. If the driver were to put their foot on the brakes, there would also be a braking force acting backwards and a reduced thrust. And there would be unbalanced forces again and the car would decelerate. So if you look at all of the arrows facing right, you've got braking force and air resistance all together they would make one very large arrow facing to the right compared to that very small arrow which is the thrust facing to the left. So in this case the forces are unbalanced again and the car would decelerate. We're going to put all this together by looking at the motion of a parachutist. When a parachutist first jumps out of the plane they will have weight acting downwards and a small amount of air resistance acting in the opposite direction. Here there are unbalanced forces, so the parachutist is accelerating. But just like vehicles, the parachutist will reach a top speed, we call this terminal velocity. Because as he accelerates, air resistance will increase until eventually it equals the weight. And now you can see there are balanced forces. And because the parachute is, is already moving, he will now be travelling at a constant speed. And at some point, they will deploy their parachute. And when this happens, air resistance increases. Now we have a situation where we have unbalanced forces again, and the parachutist will decelerate. And finally, as his speed decreases with his parachute, so will the air resistance. So he will eventually again have balanced forces and be travelling at a different and slower constant speed until he eventually lands on the ground. We can put all this motion together on a motion graph 
called a velocity time graph. For key stage 3, you can think of velocity as speed, although when you get to GCSE, you'll understand that it's a little bit different. So it has the same units, velocity is measured in metres per second, and along the bottom we've got time. So when the parachutists first jumps out of the plane, they are accelerating, and then the horizontal part of the graph shows the maximum velocity, or the terminal velocity, that they reach. And at the horizontal part, they're travelling at constant speed. So if we place our force diagrams on top, the first curved part would be when the weight is greater than the air resistance and the parachute is, is experiencing unbalanced forces. And the horizontal part would be when they're travelling at constant speed, so they are experiencing balanced forces. And then the parachutists will deploy the parachute and their velocity or their speed will decrease rapidly. And that's because the air resistance is much greater than the weight. They are experiencing unbalanced forces. Until eventually we get another horizontal part on the graph because we are now experiencing balanced forces. And the parachutist is travelling at a new, lower, constant speed and then the final bit would be where they hit the ground and their velocity goes to zero meters per second and they stop. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.